Hey, welcome back to Guitar Discoveries. Today, why I'm obsessed with harmony guitars. Here are three snippets of me playing the three harmony guitars I own. First, a Stella H929. I love coffee, I love tea, I love the Java Java and he loves me. Coffee and tea and the Java and me. A cup, a cup, a cup, a cup, a cup. A Harmony Rocket H59. And a Harmony Lap Steel H7. So all three of those basically qualify as cheap guitars. And yet, I'm obsessed with these guitars. I want to play them all the time. And that's an obsession that just sort of defies logic to me. So for example, why would I deliberately go and pick up a Stella H929, a guitar that originally cost $23, and which you can buy now for about 200 even a vintage guitar. Why would I ever pick that instead of the $5,000 Martin that I own? Or why would I want to play this 1965 Harmony Rocket when I own a much more expensive and frankly better built uh, heritage guitar? It just defies logic. So maybe I got a screw loose. Stick around and let's figure this out. So Harmony Guitars, what's the story? This is a company that started back in the late 1800s. From 1892 until the mid 70s, when Harmony went bankrupt from all the cheap foreign made guitars coming into the US, this is a company that was pretty much synonymous with cheap student beginner guitars. And I guess that's not really surprising because Harmony was cranking out guitars. They were producing more guitars than all the other guitar makers in the world combined. So in, in the, at their peak in the mid 60s, Harmony was cranking out 350,000 units a year. Can you even really process that? That's a thousand guitars a day. And these were guitars of every imaginable body type, acoustic type, everything, you know, hollow bodies, electrics, you name it. Keep in mind that harmonies weren't just marketed as harmonies either. Often the same models were on the market under three primary brand names. There was the Harmony brand, which primarily sold to independent music stores. There was the Silvertone brand, which was marketed through Sears. The Airline brand, marketed through Montgomery Ward. And then the Holiday brand, marketed through Alden's, which was a catalog mail order company. And there were other brands too. So a lot of harmony guitars were kind of least common denominator guitars. They weren't particularly good playing guitars. They weren't great sounding guitars. They were just kind of mediocre. And some of them didn't really last very well either. They were kind of like the forever 21 of American guitars. However, harmony did offer a one year guarantee and that forced them to at least improve their manufacturing to a certain point on even the cheapest guitars where they knew it would be returned if anything was wrong with that guitar. So they did really introduce some innovations and they would proudly tout these innovations in their catalogs. So in these pages from 1950s and 60s Harmony catalogs, you can see an incredible range of instruments that these guys were making. I mean, some of the guitars were cosmetically very cool, especially in retrospect. And in the late 50s, Harmony was really the first company to embrace the terminology of the sort of sci-fi space race era. They introduced models like the Rockets and the Meteors, which were hollow body, and then the Stratotones, 
the Mars, the Mercury, and the Jupiter, which were really nice solid body guitars. These models, the sci-fi sort of space race models, also happen to be some of the highest quality instruments that Harmony ever built. Lots of them had electronics, specifically pickups, like these gold foil pickups here, made by DeArmond, Row Industries, another American company, and they just have a unique sound. They can be particularly excellent for gritty blues tones and things like that. And so they really do have a mojo and that makes them attractive to a lot of musicians today. They don't sound like a traditional Gibson or a Fender. They really have a different sound and it instantly feels more vintage. So I really have a spiritual relationship with music and with instruments. And because of that, I, I really believe that every instrument has a spirit of its own. And you might not expect that to be true with mass-produced instruments. You think, oh, they were cranking them out. There can't really be much of a spirit in there. There must not be a lot of artistry infused in it. I actually don't find that to be the case, especially with a lot of these harmonies. Uh, in fact, they really do, they're unique instruments. Uh, they may be funky, but they have a unique mojo. Each instrument has a mojo. And if that mojo happens to be in sync with or in alignment with or, or a good vibration with the player, it can be like nothing else. Um, I, so, I, I almost feel like it's a little bit like um, the little engine that could, you know, these are instruments that sort of were looked down upon. And so in a sense, they almost have to prove themselves as you play them. They're, they're working as hard as you are to, to prove themselves and to say something relevant and important. At least that's how it feels to me. So once I got my own Harmony Rocket and began to experience the magic of these gold foils, on many levels it was just pristine and gorgeous. But on a couple of the really functional player aspects, it wasn't perfect. And a couple of the things that were, well, the thing that was the most noticeable was the height of the pickups. They weren't balanced when you'd switch from one to two to three, you know, you're working from, from the neck toward the bridge. When you'd switch from those, they were out of balance. They required a luthier to actually shave down the platforms. These are not adjustable. So the, the my luthier actually had to shave down those road, rosewood platforms to get them in perfect balance. Of course, once that was done, they're great. The pickups themselves are fantastic. And once my luthier tweaked it, I realized just how special this instrument was. And it got me going on this research project, a voyage of discovery. I just wanted to know everything I could about harmony guitars. And, you know, I think I put a special emphasis on rockets, but I wanted to know all about the gold foil harmonies because of how amazing these sounded and just how different they actually were, but still great players' guitars. So, so my obsession led me down a rabbit hole of the internet and I just kept wanting to find out who's playing harmonies and, and why, what do they say about it? What's special? What, what made them ever choose a harmony when they can choose any instrument they want? Here's an example. This is one of my favorite artists of today, Hosier, talking about his Harmony H78. What I find with, with, with the pickups here is just they just have a woof to them that no, nothing else can. Yeah. You know, it just does a job that, that nothing else in, in that, that, I, that I have to my hands can do. All right, so I want to share three sources of information about Harmony guitars that may be helpful for you if you want to go down this voyage of discovery. So the first is the Harmony database at harmony.demont.net. This is a great resource because it has all the harmonies by model number. You can click on any model number, see photos, uh, see comments from players and owners of those instruments. It's actually very cool. Another one is the history of the Harmony Company at ChasingGuitars.com. So the actual address is ChasingGuitars.com slash Harmony hyphen history. This is another place where you can read about the early history of Harmony, how they developed and just turned into this dominant manufacturer of guitars. The final source I want to mention is this book 
It's a book from Ron Rothman. It's called Harmony, the People's Guitar, 1945 to 1975. This was actually a gift from my wife. I think she noticed that I was really into the Harmony guitar. And, and when we started using that guitar in our band, Cosmic Spin, we both just had a different relationship. Like the songs kept coming back to life because we were now using the Harmony. And I had such an incredibly wide variety of tones that I could get out of these three single coil pickups, whether you using them individually or all together. So this is a really cool book. Um, in future videos, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about some specific things from this, but in the meantime, I just want you to know it's out there. So thanks for being here today. That's the Discovery Harmony Guitars, unlikely superheroes of the modern musical world. Please uh, check out this video. This is about my H59. You can see how excited I was when I first got that guitar, kind of crazy. Uh, go to guitardiscoveries.com and you can see all the videos that I've done. Please subscribe, hit the bell so you get notified when new videos come out. I can't wait to share more. I'm going to be doing a series on Harmony, various aspects of it. So come back and see me again.